So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to use the autofill feature to quickly uh, populate cells. So first, let's zoom in so you can see this better. Now, let's say if we write the name John and we wish to copy this entry, you can use the autofill feature by left clicking that button at the bottom right and then extend it to how many cells you want to. And so you can do that. Now let's say if you want to copy a number, you could just type in the number five, click in, I mean click the button at the bottom right, and then drag it. And so you can copy it uh, that way as well. You can also copy things horizontally just by extending it. And so that's one way in which you can use the autofill feature by uh, copying a cell and extend it horizontally or vertically. Now, another way in which you can use Excel's autofill feature is with sequences. For example, let's say if I write the number 1 and then 2, and I want to go up to like 15. So what you need to do is you need to highlight these two um, cells, both cells, not just one, so Excel knows what pattern uh, to continue, and then continue it, stretch it out. So notice that there's a little button, a little number next to my cursor in red. You can see it says 5 and then 6. So that tells you where to stop. So if I want to go to 13, I will stop at 13. Now, let's say if I want to go by 3s, starting with 5. If I add 3 to 5, it's 8. And then after that, it's 11. So what I can do is highlight the first two numbers, click the button at the bottom right, and then extend it. And as you can see, there's a little number next to my red mouse, or the mouse highlighted in red. So I can stop at 29, I can stop at 35, or I can go all the way to 44. And so it tells you where to stop. Now let's say if I started with 7, and I want to go up by 6, the next number will be 13. I can also do this or expand it horizontally. And I could stop at 55. And so that's how you could use the autofill feature if you have an arithmetic sequence of numbers. Now let's say if we want a geometric sequence as opposed to an arithmetic sequence. In an arithmetic sequence we're adding. In this case we're adding by two. So let's say if we want to extend this sequence, we can just do what we've been doing before. Now, instead of an arithmetic sequence, let's say if we have a geometric sequence where we multiply the previous number by two. So two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, and so forth. Well, if we try to extend it, we're not going to get the next number 32. 16 times two is 32. So we need to do something different. Let's click the back button. Now, instead of left clicking the button at the bottom right, right click it and then extend it. So initially you'll get the same result, but notice that this, this thing appears, this window, so to speak. And instead of selecting a linear trend, what you want to select is a growth trend. And so as you can see, we get the geometric sequence that we want. 32 times 2 is 64, 64 times 2 is 128, and so forth. So that's how you can use autofill to extend an arithmetic sequence versus a geometric sequence. Now, let's talk about some other things that we can do. So let's get rid of this. Something else that we can do is we could extend the month of the year. So let's say if we have January and we don't want to write February, March, April, and so forth. So left click the button at the bottom right, and you could extend it to anywhere you want. If you want to stop at July, you can stop here. If you want to stop at October, you can stop there. Now you can also use the abbreviation for the month. So this time, I'm going to stop at December. And keep in mind, you can also do this horizontally. So I can start with May, and then extend it to the right. And let's stop at November. And so that's one way in which you could uh, 
use the autofill feature. Another way is for like quarters. So let's say if you have the first quarter and you don't want to write up to the fourth quarter, you can just extend it. Now there's only four quarters in a year, so there's no such thing as the fifth quarter. You could also do the abbreviation for this with Q1 and then extend it. Let's stop at Q4. So those are some ways in which you could use the autofill feature within Excel. Now you could also extend names associated with numbers. For example, let's say if we have the name Karen and let's put a one next to it. We could expand that. Karen 2, Karen 3, Karen 4, and so it's going to follow the pattern. Now let's say if we have a math problem. So let me write the months of the year. Let's say if you put in $300 in a savings account in January, and then you put another 300 in February and another 300 in March. And then you keep this pattern. Every month you're depositing $300 into an account. How much money will be in the account by November? So you could use the autofill feature to do that. But first, we need to establish a pattern using the first two cells. Then all we got to do is extend it to November. So at the end of November, we should have $3,300 in, uh, in the account. And so you could use this to solve arithmetic math problems and uh, word problems with sequences. Now something else that we could do is we could extend the days of the week. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and let's go all the way to the end uh, which will be Sunday. And you could also extend the abbreviations of the weekdays and the weekends as well. So let's expand this to Sunday in a horizontal direction. And so if you need to write the days of the week, you can do that using the autofill feature. Now, the next thing we need to talk about are dates. So let's start with April 1st, 2018. If you don't want to write like April 2nd, April 3rd, just use the autofill feature. And let's stop at April 13th. Now, let's say if we don't want to go by one day, let's say if we want to increase the months of the year. So right click it and then extend it. Now this uh, dialog box open and let's change it from fill days to fill months. And as you can see, the months are increasing. So we have April, May, June, July, August, September, and so forth. Now let's right click it again. And if we want to, we can just fill the weekdays. So the weekends will be skipped. Going from April 6th to April 9th, we skipped Saturday and Sunday. And from 13th to 16th, we skipped the weekend there as well. Now, let's right click the bottom button again. Now, if we choose fill years, the years will increase by one. So we have 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, and so forth. So that's how you could use the autofill feature when dealing with dates. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is how to use the autofill feature with formulas. But first, let's fill up a few things. So let's write the month of the year. And we're going to go all the way to December. And here we're going to put the price of an item. Let's say we're selling laptops. And the price of each laptop that we're selling is 200. And we're not going to change the price, so let's extend this to uh, December. And then the units sold, we'll put that here. So this will change. Let's say 15 in January, 25 in February, well, 22 in April. Let's go back to March. Let's say 31 in March, 35 in May, 42 in June, 31 in July, and back to school. So that's going to increase to 75. And Notice that I have dollar signs here. I don't want that. So I need to change the formatting. I'm going to right click it. 
One way to do this is to select this arrow next to this dollar sign and then go to more accounts and formats. Let's choose a general number. And so that'll take care of that. Let's say September, the cells are still high, 65. October, it slows down, 52. November, maybe a Black Friday, so let's say it goes up to 120. And December, you got the holiday shopping, so let's say 215. Now, in the next column, it's going to be the revenue generated. And then after that, let's apply a tax to it. And then the last one will be the profit. So to get the revenue, it's going to be the number of laptops sold times the unit price. So 200 times 15. But let's write a formula. So we're going to multiply the entry in B2, that's 200, times that shift 8. So if you hold shift 8, you'll get the multiplication symbol times C2. And so 200 times 15 will give us 3,000. And we want this to be in dollar signs, so we'll leave it. Now what you could do is you can left click this button and extend it. And so we don't have to repeat that calculation. It's automatically done for us. So here we have B2 times C2, as you can see here, and then B3 times C3, B4 times C4, and so forth. Now let's move on to the next column, that is the taxes. Taxes can vary from country to country, but for the sake of educational purposes, let's keep this simple. Let's apply a 15% tax to the sales revenue of each month. So the revenue is located in cell D2, and to find 15% of that, we'll multiply it by 0.15. And so for the month of January, we owe 450 in taxes. Now let's extend this using the autofill feature by left clicking it. And so here we have D2 times 0.15, D3 times 0.15, D4 times 0.15, and so forth. Now to calculate the profit, we're going to deduct the revenue by the taxes. So if we subtract the revenue, which is D2, by the taxes, which is found in E2, then that will give us the profit. So 3,000 minus 450 is 2550. And then we could use the autofill feature to extend that subtraction operation, giving us what we see here. So 5,000 minus 750 is 4250. Now let's add up the totals. So for the unit column, we can write equal, sum, and then just highlight everything here and we can get the total units sold for the year, which is 728. Now, to get the total revenue, we could sum it up, and, well, actually, we don't need to do that. Let me delete this. Let's use the autofill feature and extend it this way. So now, this needs to be formatted uh, using dollar signs. So the other way to format it, instead of clicking this down arrow, you can click Format Cells, and then on the left you have the Number tab. Let's choose Currency with zero decimal places. And so the sum for this column is 145,600. As you can see, if you look at the formula, this adds up everything from cell C2 to C13. Now, if we look at this number here, 145,600, you can see that going up here, it's the sum from everything starting from cell D2 to D13. And this number is the sum of everything from E2 to E13, and this F2 to F13. So you don't have to retype it. If you just type it once, you could use the autofill feature to extend the sum to every column. And so that's it on this video. That's all I got on how to use the autofill feature to make your life easier when uh, dealing with Excel. So thanks for watching.